end of days, the I am that I am. The Lord that was and is and is to come. The one that changes stories. The Lord that gives a new song. The one that brings down from the pits into the highway. We bless you. We have found you, Lord. We have trusted you. And you have never disappointed us. And this morning, we join with the hosts of angels and the 24 elders to say holy, holy, holy to the Lord God Almighty. We bless your name. We magnify you because of who you are. Be exalted, ancient of this, in the mighty name of Jesus. As we worship you this morning in the beauty of your holiness, we ask that you manifest your presence in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we go into your word, Heavenly Father, we pray that you will touch us, move from seed to seed. Holy Spirit, we give you total permission. Do what only you can do in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody who believes, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated majestically. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Kingdom kids, are you there? Can I hear your amen? amen? Okay, can you stand up gently and go to your class with your teachers? Amen. Let's clap for them as they are going. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful morning and a beautiful month. Amen. Can you lower for me some of the number four? This is getting some echo here. Hallelujah. Amen. This is our month of unwavering faith. And I want to welcome each and every one of us to the house of the Lord, to the house of your Father. You are all welcome. Can you put your hands together? And I welcome myself to the house of my Father. Prophetess, we welcome you and the worship team. Thank you for your service to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we give God all the glory. We give God all the glory for bringing us this far. Amen. Hallelujah. We say it's our month of unwavering faith. And on Wednesday, we spend some time to speak about the unwavering faith. And when you say unwavering faith, it means your trust and your belief in God does not change with the weather. If you say, I trust in God, irrespective of what happened, I stand on my position. Hallelujah. And today we are also celebrating the Pentecost. We are celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And today I want to share with us on what the Lord has in store for us. Amen. Amen. I know God is a wonderful God. Do you believe that? Yes. yes. And I know that God has the best interest for all of us. Yes. Do you also believe that? Yes. That God has the best for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Psalm 103 verse 5 says, He satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. It satisfies your desire. Do you? Do I have anyone here who have a desire? I have a desire. I have a desire to see God move in my life. I have a desire to see the promise of God come to pass without delay in my life. 
I have a desire to see all my family members come to the knowledge of Christ. I have a desire for the enemy to be defeated. I have a desire for God to use me for his glory. I don't know what is your desire this morning, but God says, I will satisfy, which means I will fulfill your desires with good things. Hallelujah. And your youth will be renewed like that of eagles. So I declare this morning that God will satisfy your desires with good things. Your youth shall be renewed like that of the eagles in the name of Jesus. This means that you will not be weary, you will not be tired. Hallelujah. We started the year from January and many people at this point are still are tired and they say I can't continue anymore. But I want to tell you that when God satisfies your desires with good things, it will make sure you are not tired. Amen. Hallelujah. And that shall be And that shall be your testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, that is my testimony. That is my testimony. God, shall God shall satisfy all my desires, all my desires with good things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let's go to the word of God this morning. We're going to read three scriptures. We're going to read three scriptures quickly. One of the scriptures is our theme scripture for this month. First Corinthians chapter 2, we read from verse 4 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Then the second scripture we will take is the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And the third scripture is in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. So let's start with Acts, the first Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. If you are there, can I hear you? Amen. amen. It says, this is supposed to Paul. He says, my message and my preaching, we are not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Other versions say of the power of the Spirit. And if you look at that scripture, the Spirit there is capital letters. So it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 5. So he said, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of of the earth. Let's take the last scripture, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Mm. Verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Mm. Notice again the Spirit, capital. Mm. Hallelujah. Father, bless the reading of this word and speak to us today as we avail ourselves and open our spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that through the Holy Spirit there will be a great impactation in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. So in this month of unwavering faith and as we are 
celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, I want to share with us about unwavering faith in the power and ability of the Holy Spirit. Unwavering faith in the power and ability of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts chapter 1, the disciples after Jesus resurrected from dead and they were asking him about Jesus. When are you going to restore the, 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 the kingdom back to Israel? Because that was the mindset that Jesus will we, 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 we plan a coup and he will overthrow the Roman Empire. But in all the journey Jesus has with this disciple, they still didn't get the concept of the kingdom of Jesus and why he came. So Jesus said, it is tough for you to know. Don't worry about that. But I want you to focus on what matters. Focus on what matters. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that when we walk with God and God calls us to do one thing or the other, we don't focus on what matters. We begin to think about what is not necessary. We begin to ask about what about that? What about what is happening in that nation? What about what is happening in that ministry? Jesus said, leave that to me. Focus on what matters. Hallelujah. And this is what matters. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he told them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. That is what matters. I have chosen you to work with me in these three years of my ministry on earth. You've gone through on the job training, and this is what matters. Be my witness. Witness about me. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus prepared them to be witness for him. Jesus has already told them that signs and wonders will follow those who believe. Hallelujah. Jesus has has shown how to raise the dead. They've seen miracles and signs and wonders. They've seen it all. But on this occasion, Jesus is telling them, I want you to do what matters after I have gone. Be my witness. Hallelujah. To be my witness. That is to say, as a witness, you need to live a life that will make people to see me in you. You need to demonstrate power and ability that people will see me in you. Be my witness. Tell them about what I can do. Demonstrate to them what I can do. Bring them to me. That is what matters. That is why you are sitting here. That is why Jesus saved you. That is why you are alive. To be a witness for Jesus Christ. To be a witness means you need to be a light to the nations. People need to see your light and they will glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus told them, I want you to be my witness. However, he knows that to be a witness in this end time is not possible because there will be forces that will confront you. There will be powers that will limit you. There will be ganking up against my assignment upon your life. And we saw it with the disciples. They wanted to preach the gospel. They were thrown in the prisons. Herod killed one of them. There were opposition that they scattered all across the nations. So Jesus, who knew tomorrow, knew that they would not be able to witness as he wanted to witness. So Jesus told them, 
a certain day will come the promise i have given to you will be fulfilled on this day the holy spirit will come and when the holy spirit come you shall receive power and when you receive that power don't sit with the power Amen. don't talk about the power Amen. go and be a witness Amen. unto him yes. and it is amazing jesus said wait for me he used the word he said wait for me in jerusalem and wait for me and he said, when you wait, that which I have promised will do what? Will come upon you. And I want to focus on that wait. In chapter 2, we see the fulfillment of that. And there is something I saw there which the Lord wants to speak to us today. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered in a place. And suddenly... The promise came to pass. They saw the tongue of fire and it came on them. And everybody started to speak in tongues. So what happened on this day of Pentecost? And I want to clarify certain things so that we have a good understanding. Jesus said, wait. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said in verse 2, chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible said, when the day of Pentecost came or has been fulfilled, then that means there is a day that everybody is waiting for. The word Pentecost, the day, did not happen because the Holy Spirit came. Mm -mm. He said, when the day came, so on that day, everybody came all around to mark and celebrate that day. So before the new Pentecost in the New Testament, it means in the Old Testament, there were Pentecost. The Pentecost in the Old Testament was a Jewish festival that happened during the feast of what they call the first fruit. It happens after 50 days of Passover. It happens after they cross the, they, they, they move out of Israel, which was an indication of when Jesus delivered us from sin, when he died on the cross. Am I speaking to someone? So they celebrated this day. And on this day, everybody will gather. They will come all around to come and celebrate the day where they were delivered from bondage. So on this particular day, when they were going to celebrate this feast, Jesus told them, wait for me on that particular day. Because what you see in the Old Testament is a shadow of what will happen in the New Testament. So he says, you need to wait. So on that day, everybody came to go and do and celebrate the normal. Everybody, we are there to celebrate the normal. This is how we have been doing it. Year in after year, this is how it has been given to us by our forefathers. We are going to celebrate Pentecost. We will just eat, dance, and celebrate, and we go back home, and we will wait for next year. But Jesus told his disciples, I want to do a new thing. And on this day, I want you to wait for me. So what happened on that day? The Bible said, when the day was accomplished on that day, everybody were outside. But a particular people who got that revelation, who got the instruction, they gathered and they waited, separated from everybody in the upper room. It was the disciples that got the message from Jesus. But on that day, the Bible said they were 120. 
which means they have shared with other followers. Other disciples say, Jesus said we should wait. And they must be asking. But every time, and when do we wait? On the day of Pentecost. So everybody said we should wait. And if we are waiting, we need to wait in one accord. Which means we must worship together. Which means we must pray. We must be expectant of what he wants to do. We are not going to do things the way we use to do. It must have taken faith for these people to separate themselves. Hallelujah. And what am I saying here is that when God said, I'm about to do something, it takes those who can separate themselves, who can wait upon the Lord, who can say, I am not willing to experience the normal. I want something different. I want something unusual. I want something that is out of the norm. I have been doing this over and over. If God tells us this is the month of unwavering faith, you need to set yourself apart and say, Lord, I want to experience the unusual. I am tired of the same thing. You said you will do it. I am going to wait on you. Yes. Hallelujah. The problem is that when God speaks to us, we operate in the old norm. We are not willing to move in the dimension of doing something new. The guys heard the word and they say, we have, there is no reference to what we are waiting for. We have never experienced it. We didn't read about it that Holy Spirit came down on people. No, it has never been. Even in the scripture, it has not been recorded. The prophet did not prophesy except in Joel that said on that day, the Holy Spirit will pour out, but he did not mention that it's the day of Pentecost. So they were waiting. They waited. And because they separated themselves, from the norm, the promise came. And the Bible said, the Holy Spirit came down. And he gave them enablement. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I tell you that when God promised you, you need to have unwavering faith in what he promised you. Somebody need to declare, Lord, I shall wait on you. No matter how long it takes, uh, I shall wait on you. Let me paint the picture once more so that we understand what really happened here. Then, the, the, everybody left Okanja. We are coming to Ventu to celebrate the feast of the Pentecost, feast of the first fruit. Everybody carried their sacrifice. Carried everybody load their baki. People are coming from Okakarara. They are coming from Oshakati, from Marieta, Varamba. Everybody we are coming. So we all gather here in Ventu. And usually we will all meet at the Independence Stadium where there will be sound system. You know how we do it. There will there will be DJs. There will be breathless somewhere there. There will be jumping castle for children. There will be so much celebration. But these three people said, Jesus said we should wait. Then they gather themselves somewhere. And people are looking. Where are you, Solomon? Said Jesus said we'll wait. Five in the morning, six in the morning, they are still waiting. Ten o'clock, people are there. The prize is ready. Come, come, come. No, 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 no. I am waiting. They say maybe they are fasting. Three o'clock. The lunch is ready. Come. No, no, no. I am waiting. And they began to laugh at them. These religious fanatics. How can they be waiting when everything is bubbling here? That was why when the power came, Holy Spirit gave them the enablement to speak the language which they could not speak before. The Bible said they rushed there and they were saying, are these guys not speaking my language? 
One day I was studying the scripture, this same scripture, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, As I speak in tongues, there are other languages that my children need to speak. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you begin to speak the language of those you don't understand before. What is the language? Language of money. You will be able to speak their language to say we are buying properties. You will be able to speak the language to say our sons and daughters are on those mountains where they are decreeing things and it is happening. And it is only for those who chose to wait on the Lord. I believe somebody will wait here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Pentecost in the New Testament was changed and replaced with the Pentecost in the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit comes to fulfill Jesus' words. They receive power. And as a result, the church and the body of Christ are called to bear witness to all nations. Not through your power, but through the power of the Holy Spirit to the glory of God. I don't know about you, but in this season of uncertainties, in this season of negative news, in this season where there are so many troubles, in this season where people don't even know what tomorrow holds, I want to experience something different. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to witness in a way that has never been done before. Yes. I want to reach out to people. I've been crying to God that in this generation, I don't know about you, but I'm praying for myself that if I walk in the street, just by looking at me, they will see Jesus. People will be compelled to say, tell me about your Jesus. If they speak to me and I speak to them, it must be about Christ. People are crying for something. People are in bondage and there is that power invested in the children of God. That we are able to witness in this generation. Mm. Jesus is coming soon. And the enemy is amplifying his strategy. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to break down territories so that we can set captives free. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Why people gather to experience the normal? Some people say, I want to experience something new, the extraordinary. We all need a shift. Yes. In the church, we need a shift. Yes. We need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to breathe on us. Yes. We need a breath, fresh breath of the Holy Spirit to breathe on our outlook, on our marriage, on our finances. The Holy Spirit came out. And it was poured out on everyone. The question is, how many of us here, listening to me, those who are here and online, need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit? How many of us need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Remember the apostle before this encounter, the Bible said Jesus called them. And he lands on them and he breath on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So, why do they need another Holy Spirit? What actually happened is that there was an activation of the Holy Spirit deposited in them. And every day we need the infill of this Holy Spirit, we need a fresh unction of this Holy Spirit. And it's my prayer this morning for myself and for you that you will receive a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit upon your life in the name of Jesus. The Bible said all of them, not some of them, all of them we are filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled during this celebration of this Pentecost, Jesus is reminding us 
that the presence of the Holy Spirit is with us to guide us in all truths, to guide us in all promises. The presence of the Holy Spirit is with us to bring about restoration of the promise of God. So Jesus said, when this Holy Spirit come, the moment the Holy Spirit come, there will be some shaking. Mm. There will be some feeling. You feel it in your body, but it does not end there. Mm. It says, when the Holy Spirit come, you shall do what? You shall receive power. The power of the Holy Spirit. What is it? Power is defined as the ability to act effectively and the capacity to direct or influence the behavior of, of others in a certain course or if, event. If somebody don't want to go to a place, if you are able to convince them and they change their mind, that is power. That is power. If somebody said, I'm going to divorce, and you are able to speak to them through the word of God, and they change their mind, that is power. So I don't want us to look at power only in the light of commanding the demon to go. Power that the Holy Spirit is bringing is more than that. It includes chasing the demon. It includes changing atmosphere. But it also including change. It includes changing the course of action of people, their belief system. And that's what Jesus is giving to us. Go and witness to them. Use the power to change their mindset. Use the power to turn their minds towards me so that they can live a life of righteousness and holiness. Hallelujah. The whole power of the Holy Spirit is different from every other power. The power of the Holy Spirit helped the disciple to turn the nations upside down. They would not have done it without the power, but they were able to do it because they received the power from the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says from the day they received the Holy Spirit, their life never remained the same. There were evidence of speaking in tongues. Evidence of speaking in tongues. Uh, today I pray somebody will receive that structure and you'll be able to break forth uh, in tongues and speak uh, to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people will say, I don't need to. But the Bible says it is the evidence. It is the evidence and there is power in speaking in tongues uh, because it is the the language of the spirits. Hallelujah. From that day, they began to speak. We saw boldness. Peter, who denied Jesus, began to minister to people. No more fear. No more shame. No more intimidation. Shame and regret we are gone. Peter denied Jesus three times. He was a shadow of himself. But when the power of the Holy Ghost came, he forgot about yesterday. The power of the Holy Ghost is coming upon somebody. Every shame will be taken away. Every reproach will be taken away. You are coming out of this service and you will be able to speak and witness as a bold child of God in the name of Jesus. When this Holy Spirit come and you receive the power, it will help you to conform to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. When you say, I try to live this Christian life. I try to live a holy life, but I am struggling. You are struggling because you have not waited on the Lord. You have not received the power of the Holy Spirit. But today, if you are struggling to live a life of holiness, Holy Spirit is coming upon you. You will be able to live a life that will glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Spirit. Anytime you celebrate something, there must be a blessing. 
when we celebrate independence, there are always gifts and blessings. When you celebrate birthday, gifts are being shared. There is no time you celebrate something that you don't talk about. You don't see gift or food or something. Today, as we celebrate the Pentecost, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, God is ready to pour out a fresh wind, a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. I believe someone is ready to receive their portion today in the name of Jesus. Because this is a year of greater works. This is the year where God wants to move. And time is running. As the Holy Spirit is coming, the impossibility shall become possible. You will be able to break territories. You will be able to stand up to adversaries in the mighty name of Jesus. Why are children of God serving God for so long get to be defeated so easily? We know about the Holy Spirit. We sing about the Holy Spirit. We write about the Holy Spirit. But yet children of God give up easily. We suffer defeat from time to time. We sit without going out to witness. We get tired when it comes to doing the works of God. Why is that? The answer is in our faith. Why is it that as a child of God, you are in the house of God for years, you are not speaking in tongues. Huh? You call you, we lay hands on you, you are not speaking in tongues. Why? Your faith. 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 We know that we have the Holy Spirit, but we do not have enough faith to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. The apostles faced difficult situations, but in the midst of it, their faith did not shake. They moved in the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they have faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you go to war, or go to battle and somebody gives you a gun and you look at the enemy and you see their weapons. If you don't have faith in what you carry, you will run away from the battle. Yes. That is what is happening to many of us. The enemy will come and they will show you their weapons. And you will look at what you have. You say, ah, ah this one. Someone came once and said, man of God, you need to pray. They shared the, the trouble. The trouble was this big in their own eyes. And as we listen, I listen, I say, okay, let's pray. We'll just pray. Two minutes prayer. You say, is that all? How can I share my problem for 15 minutes and you just pray for two minutes? How? You see where faith is. But thank God, God came through. And she was able to see that there is power. <coughs> the Holy Spirit doesn't make noise. But is powerful. The power invested in you might not be seen by people, but you know what you carry. You need to know what you carry. And you need to demonstrate your unwavering faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then it will work for you. When you are confronted with circumstances, what do you do? Do you focus on the situation or on the challenges? I've seen people when say, did you pray? Did you command? They say, on this one, you can't pray we need to get some forces from somewhere. It means your faith in the power of the Holy Spirit is wavering. You will see sometimes in the church 
we thank God the power of the Holy Spirit is at work here. Amen. That we have prayed that the covenant we have with God, anybody with demon coming from the gate, the demon is cast out. Amen. Because we don't have time for demons. Amen. Uh, we cast it out before they come. The moment they enter the gate, there. So you won't see people running around manifested. Some people do. I'm not. God, this that's the covenant we have with God. But you see, in some places when people are manifesting demon and they, they, they you, you, you watch them and the, the, the demon is manifest and the person is talking to the pastor. Hey, I will stop you. See, you see the, the saints, they will be behind. They are watching what will happen. Pastor is praying alone. But when they see the person is now falling down, then they hey, in the name of Jesus. Rah, 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 rah. That is what. But at the beginning, the faith in the power of the Holy Ghost in them. He said, hey, this one, we can't be able to do it. Or you see somebody ministry. We are ministering to someone and it looks like this person is dying. They've given up the ghost and you are praying. Come alive. At that point, saints are their hands are on their chest and they are afraid. Hey, don't let this person die in our church. Oh, hey. But the moment that person sleeps, come around, then they begin to pray. The faith comes up. Uh -uh. Even when you see that person dying, your faith in the power of the Holy Ghost must be up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When COVID came, many people's faith in the power of the Holy Ghost went down. It went down. When they hear the case is increasing, the faith is decreasing. And fear steps in. And that's the language of fear. When you when 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 you face challenges and your faith is going down, it begins to tell you it is not possible. You cannot make it. That's why Apostle Paul wants us to move in the power of the Holy Ghost like he did. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read that scripture again. Verse 4 to 5. He said, my speech and my message we are not in mere words of wisdom but they are in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So that your faith, your faith might rest not in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. What is this power of God? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That your faith should rest in the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, so when I speak to you, I demonstrated to you, they came in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want you also to rest your faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Your faith should be the power of God, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. We saw Apostle Paul demonstrated this in one of his, in, in his journey in ministry. The devil decided to distract him one day. They were gathered there. They were ministering. And the Bible said one man was sitting there by the wall. And what happened? The man fell down and they proclaimed him dead. It was important to him that this man, this man is dead. You can imagine we are having a, a, a Bible study and somebody just throws up and falls down and somebody say, paramedic say he's dead. What do you think will happen? Huh? You will close your notes, which you are using to you close your Bible also. Say, hey, devil, but what happened? Apostle Paul was not moved. He continued to preach because he had the power. He has the faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Paul went down. He fell on that man and he embraced this dead man. He said, don't trouble yourself. There is life in him. That's what he said. Acts chapter 20, verse 10 to 12. You can look at that story <laughs> when you get home. Apostle Paul continued to preach. Say, 
there is power of the Holy Spirit in me. This message must go out. I must witness about Christ. I'm not going to stop my message. He continued to preach. Later the man came back to life. He continued to preach. What is Apostle Paul telling us? There are circumstances that will come. And we want your faith to go up and down. Paul is saying, rest your faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't let something stop you in witnessing and doing what God has called you to do. Don't allow it. Some news will come while you are in the heat of the moment of winning soul for God. And the devil will tell you, don't worship God. You say, you know, as long as heaven and earth remains and God is on the throne, the power of the Holy Spirit is on me. I will not stop what God has called me to do. Amen. You need to have unwavering faith in the power of the Holy Ghost committed to you. Child of God, you are powerful beyond what you can think. You can move mountains. You can do great things for God. You can speak to the mountains and the mountains can move. He start to rise up and say, devil, I refuse to dance to your tune. I refuse to dance to the music you are playing for me. There is the power of the Holy Ghost in me and I'm exercising that power. Sometimes you speak, it looks as if nothing has happened. Prophetess was sharing with us the other day, I don't know whether it's here or on the threshing floor, about the fig tree. When Jesus spoke that word, the tree did not wither immediately. But the second day, in the course of time, you see, there are certain things you declare is, has been established in heaven. It will take time to manifest here on earth. But the problem is when we don't see it, it affects our faith. But God is speaking to you. This is the year of greater works. I want you to do great things for me. Your faith needs to be stable. And we are keep starting this Sunday with your faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray for you. And we want you to have the evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost. If you don't have faith, you will not be able to speak in tongues. Because you will rest on the knowledge of men. What am I saying? It sounds stupid. Hear me. I have been to places in ministry. Their situation are so difficult. They bring people to be prayed for. I pray for them in the language I understand. Nothing happened. But when I switch to the Holy Ghost. I begin to pray. Immediately things happen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There is power in speaking in tongues. Yes. One of the great men explained, he said, when you speak, when a child is growing up, the child begins to speak. Ba, da, 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 da. What would the parents do? The parents smile. Mm -hmm. They don't say, you, what are you saying? And the parents will even give meaning to what the child is saying. Yes. Oh, you want meal. Oh, you want it. They will say, ah, blah, 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 blah. They will give and they say, until the child grows. That's how it is in the spirit. When you begin to speak, you have to tell your understanding to keep quiet. And allow your mouth to speak as the Holy Spirit enables. But if you don't have faith, in the power of the Holy Ghost, you will remain operating in the wisdom of men. And you will remain like that. Why people are fellowshipping with God, you, you feel with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is so sweet. And when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it is sweeter when you fellowship in the Holy Ghost. When you fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues, it is very sweet. You don't even know when you get 
to 10 minutes, one hour, and you are just fellowshipping. And you began to what? Edify yourself. Somebody need edification here. And that edification does not come from men. It should come from you. You need to edify yourself so that you can witness. You need to, the Bible says when you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. Edify yourself, this means you are telling every nonsense spirit, get out of my system. Depression, get out of my system. Sadness, get out of my system. Then your spirit is alive and floating and you'll be able to move. You might not have money in your pocket, but you are floating in the Holy Ghost. You might not have food in your cupboard, you are floating in the Holy Ghost. Things might not be the way you want it to be, but you are floating and you are able to minister in the Holy Ghost to people. Unwavering faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe I have someone here who said I'm ready to receive a fresh breath. I'm not going to do it. It's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, like this day, they were all gathered in one place like this. They were all together and the sound came from heaven and filled the whole house and the tongue of fire that separated came on each of them. No discrimination. It came on each of them. I believe as many that are willing tonight, the wind of the Holy Spirit is coming down. If you can have the faith of a mustard seed, if you can have the faith as little as that a mustard seed, the power will come upon you. And I can assure you, your life will never remain the same. Can we rise up on our feet? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Just take a minute and begin to thank God. Thank God for this day. Thank God that you are in this gathering. Thank God that you are in this In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands so that we can pray with you for have anyone there. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus